Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked for Life Fly Fishing. And in your my last video, we talked about how to use feathers that are too large for the size of hook that we're trying to tie our uh, soft hackle wet flies on. So in this particular um, video, I'm going to show you an alternate method uh, for tying in these, fly, uh, these feathers, I should say, and uh, get a different looking result. Uh, the previous video, the hackles ended up being very tight to the body. They didn't stand up very well. Uh, this method allows the body, uh, sorry, the hackles to stand up. The barbs will stand up. So let's get going and uh, I'll start with just putting in our start of our body here. So you're not going to go very far with this. You're just going to start with a little bit of uh, our hackle here. Now, so I've done the same thing with the feather I did with the last one, is I've just uh, put... Uh, Cut off the tip and just using a bit of the feather. But I am going to tie it in the other way, wrap the barbs around the hook shank, then come up with a couple of soft wraps. Now what you're going to do is you're going to pull those barbs in until they're the length you want. And then you're going to tighten up the wraps and then trim off. Okay, when you look at this, you can see right off the bat, we've got an issue here. If I wanted to tie a really, really nice looking fly out of this with a nice smooth body, that's not gonna work very nicely. So this is a good alternative when you're doing a dub body. So I'm gonna quickly double body on and then we'll get back and talk about uh, what we're gonna do to turn this into a nice looking spider. Okay, we have our dub body, and now we're going to push these hackles back, spread them around, push them back, make sure they're going all around. Now what you can do at this stage is you can take a half hitch tool and push those barbs back. Now we wrap. Okay, there is a, a simple wet fly. You can see the barbs stand up better using this method. I could have even got them to stand up even higher if I didn't uh, uh, push them back as much. I wanted to slope these a little bit, but you had some options there. I could have stopped the head a little bit shorter and had them stand up even more. You can see some of these bottom ones are standing up pretty good. So it's a method that you can, depending on how much you push them back, you can make them stand up almost dead straight, or you can get them sloping back a modest amount like I have here, uh, or anywhere in between. It just depends on how you choose to wind the head. As I say, the one disadvantage for this is if you're looking for a really neat smooth body, you're going to get that lump where you tied in the hackle. And uh, there's no getting around it. It's going to be there. It's going to be behind. So you are going to have a bit of a lumpy back end. So, you know, it's both methods have their drawbacks and their pluses. So you can put it with the V going forward, the V going back, you'll get two different looks and you'll get two different kinds of flies out of it and each with their own, you know, uh, things that can go wrong. But it's a great way to handle flip feathers a little too oversized. And in the next video, I'm going to look at a style that uses this particular type of tying to get a particular look. It's called the Crosby style. Uh, it's mentioned in this book. It's not a style of fly that I've ever fished but I'm kind of curious about it. I might uh, start tying some of these and using them in my fishing. It's an interesting looking little pattern. So we'll do some Crosby uh, uh, styles on the next few flies. Cheers.